Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're back to working on the Monarch lathe restoration, and today we're going to try to tackle the tailstock that goes on this machine over here. I'm still waiting on a couple of things I need to move forward with the, the saddle restoration. So I thought while I had some time, we'd just go ahead and get this part knocked on out so that it'd be ready to go. So let's get in here. We're going to tear this thing apart, uh, take it completely apart, clean it up, get things painted, look for any problems, fix anything that needs to be fixed and then put it all back together. So let's tear it apart. Well, let's start with the easy stuff. Uh, this is the lock lever that just, uh, when you wanna lock your quill in place, it should just unscrew. There should just be a little slit in the other side over there. And when you clamp that down, it just tightens, tightens down on the, on the quill. So that's off. And with that, let's, uh, see if we can get the quill to come on out. We'll just go ahead and run it all the way out to the end. And there should just be a screw in there. And it just un comes unscrewed and should pull right out. See, we're getting kind of long here. All right. There we go. Next thing I want to get out is this, um, hand wheel and looks like there is a screw on the back side of this. It just comes undone and this does not look like the original setup. Looks like someone has modified this at some point. Perhaps um, you can tell the hand wheel has been busted and welded back together. Not a bad job, but we might clean that up before we uh, repaint it. But that should just come off. It should just be a keyway there. Awful lot of slop in that. All right, there we go. That is off. And now, if I'm right, this, okay, yeah, that should just unscrew. I thought it'd been tighter than that, but. All right, so we bring that out. And looks like we got some thrust bearings in here. Yeah, so you got a thrust bearing in here. A little three-piece thrust bearing. I might see if I can find a replacement for that. Just go ahead and replace it while we got it working on it. And there was an awful lot of slop in there too. I may have to put some shims or something in there to take some of that up, but we'll worry about that when we put it back together. Okay. So next thing I wanna work on here is pulling off this uh, piece on the bottom. This is basically the lock that clamps the whole uh, tailstock down to the ways. So you got this piece here that kind of clamps up underneath the, the bottom of the bed of the ways. And when you move this handle here, you see it pulls, this is on it, there's a cam in there, or an eccentric in there, and that just pulls a little lever down that clamps this in there. So, you know, we're going to take all this apart. I'm going to start by loosening this nut. <clears throat> I say I am. Right, let's see here. Get a little different. There we go. Yeah. Just had to get the right angle on it. Let's take that nut on off. All right, it appears that this is spring loaded here. I'm going to pull that out. And that rides on two pins. And there are some springs back there to push back on it. You just got some pins holding that in. Okay. And this unscrews here. Let's go ahead and take this whole assembly out. All right. All right, so on this, uh, lever here that controls that cam, there's a tapered pin that goes through this that looks like it's holding it on there. That's the big end, this is a small end, at least that's what it's looking like. So I'm gonna take a punch here and we'll see if we can drive that pin on out. There it goes. Well, now I got it trapped. Uh, when it went all the way through, it came down and it hit here, wouldn't come out any farther. So I'm gonna have to rotate it around this way. Now I should be able to come up from the bottom and push it on out. Smaller pin there. 
There we go. And that pin is out. Pull that handle off and I'll go ahead and drop that pin back in there. Just so I can uh, keep up with the pin that goes in there. All right. Looking in the bottom here, there is a collar back here in the back that kind of holds this in place. And there's a set screw in there that holds that. I'm gonna get in here with a Allen wrench, loosen that set screw up. And now hopefully what I should be able to do is drive this out now. I'm trying to see which side it needs to go out on. I'm trying to decide which way this thing needs to come out. I think it's gonna to have to come out in this direction. So I'm gonna take a brass punch, come over here on the back side, see if I can uh, drive this out. That is not wanting to go. So maybe it has to go the other way. Hmm. All right, let me figure this out. I'll be right back. Hey guys, I got you zoomed in here close so I can kind of see what's going on. I think I see what we got to do now. So if you look in here, you can see right here that cam lobe that this thing rolls around on. So you can see it's, it's, it is bigger on this side than the other side at least on that shaft there. So what's got to happen is, is this going to have to come out this way? And if you look, there's a bushing right here and this bushing goes all the way through. And that bushing is basically the same size as the largest diameter of that uh, cam lobe, maybe just a little bit larger. But what happens, what we got to do is push that whole bushing out with this. And um, so I think what I'm going to do, is going to have to come out in this, in, out the front. So I think what I'm going to do is take this over to my arbor press and see if I can just press the whole thing out, push the bushing and everything on out with it. So uh, let me go get set up over on the arbor press and see if we can get that out. I've got this over here on the arbor press now where hopefully we can press it out. And, and I, I had to share this because uh, just the other day, I think it was yesterday, actually, I got in the mail uh, from Fireball Tools. Jason over at Fireball Tools, who makes all kinds of uh, really cool fixtures and stuff for welding. Uh, I'd seen this at, at Fabtech and, and uh, told Jason I, I needed to get me one of these and, and he got me one on order. But uh, what this is, is this is a set of shims. And um, it's really for more for, or Jason designed it, I guess, more for welding. Uh, but these are shims that are nominal size shims. They actually have magnets in here so they can stick on the thing. So if you're welding and you need to, an offset or something, you can put these in there. And uh, they're just great for that. And it's got a nice uh, box that these all go in where you can keep up with them by different sizes. Well, I came over here and this thing was sitting down crooked and I needed a shim to go up underneath uh, the corners back here. And I'm like, man, I got to find a piece of shim stock somewhere, or, you know, right piece or whatever. And then ding, 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 ding. I remember Jason had sent me this and this isn't really what it was designed for. But I mean, I've had this thing in the shop barely 24 hours and I'm already putting it to use. So thank you, Jason at Fireball Tools. And if you're interested in a set of these, you can go check out his website at fireballtools.com. I hadn't even had a chance to show this in an odds and ends video yet, but I had planned to. But anyway, enough on that, back to the job at hand. I've got this set up over here now. We've got it shimmed in the back uh, where it's, it's fairly level. I got it where the, the bushing should be able to come out the bottom and we got our our shaft here so i'm just going to go ahead and uh, get it going coming down and i'm going to have to get a rod or something to push on this so let me go grab that all right i got a rod here that's should come right in here between my ram and my, what i'm pressing out so uh everything should be lined up let's see if we can uh press this out oh yeah i think it's gonna come right out
that's got that out. Let's take this over and we'll check it out. So now that we got this assembly out, you can kind of see a little bit better. So there was a, the bushing up on the front, this is actually sleeved with a bronze bushing on the inside of that so it will rotate. But you can see they have the little cam lobe milled right into that. And of course that fits on that. And as you rotate it, it moves it up and down by, it looks like about uh, a little three eighths of an inch or so uh, play in there. And uh, this bushing here came over in there and basically it just snugged it up between those two so that couldn't walk around. So anyway, got that out now. Uh, the only thing I did learn in the process is when I got it out, I realized I galled up an area pressing it out. And there's a set screw that goes in the bottom of this thing that holds this, this uh, shim in place, but I couldn't see it and because this casting here is in two pieces. This bottom piece comes off and evidently the set screw is in that. So um, note to self, or if anybody else is doing one of these, you need to remove uh, the bottom casting so you can loosen that set screw up. And uh, that little bushing there probably would have come out a lot easier uh, it, it wasn't that hard to press out, but I'll have to do some doctoring to fix that up. It shouldn't be a big issue, though, when I put it back together. But it does kind of make me mad uh, that I didn't catch that. But, oh, well, we'll deal with it. And as we were just talking about, this, this is a two-piece casting here. And if you're not familiar with tailstocks, most of them are made this way. And they're made this way so that you can adjust uh, the tailstock from uh, front to back here, going back and forth like this. And that is to uh, adjust it for any wear or taper in there so that you can get this thing lined up. Um, you know, on a lathe, if you pull the tailstock one way or the other and you're turning between centers, you'll actually turn a taper because it's not perfectly lined up. So what this allows you to do is get it aligned up. It also allows you to purposely put a taper in a shaft. If you're, if you're needing to turn a long taper, you can do that as well. So you got some set screws down here. It's got a key that basically it slides on. There's some set screws in here that you can tighten and loosen and basically adjust it back and forth. And I believe that on this one, there's not any really anything really holding it these pieces together. Well, there is, but when you clamp everything together, it's, it's kind of pulling it together. We've got all that taken apart, so I think it should come on out. So um, I think what I'll do is uh, go ahead and remove these screws. Uh, there's one on each side, and uh, these just basically, you, you loosen one, you tighten the other, and they kind of uh, push on one another to move this thing back and forth. We'll slide this around. There's your other one on the other side. And it's just come right apart. Here we go, there's our bottom casting, our top casting. And here you can see those screws uh, go into these two here. So again, you, you loosen one, you tighten one, and it just slides back and forth on this little uh, keyed way in here. So we'll point out, here's that little set screw I was talking about that was hidden in the bottom in between those castings. I'm just gonna loosen that up so that it won't be tight uh, when we put it back together and uh, we'll deal with that. Uh, and I think there's um, not much more. We got one more little part we got to pull off up here. Let's do that. So up here we got the lock mechanism for the quill. So remember there was that handle that goes on the top. When you do that handle, it basically uh, tightens and loosens. There's a, a piece in here. In fact, let's go ahead and just take it out. There you go that uh, will just clamp down on the quill. So as you tighten that up, that clamps down. We got that out and that piece of threaded rod should just come right out as well. Okay. And with that, I think we have this thing pretty well disassembled. Well, here we go, guys. There are all the components off of that tail stock. And uh, next step for me here is I'm gonna take this all over to the parts washer. Uh, get everything cleaned up, degreased, uh, whatever. Well, there you go. That's going to be a wrap on this one, guys. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and do the get it cleaned up and painted. Uh, we won't do that on camera. You guys uh, have seen 
degreasing and painting before, I'm sure, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, but once we get it all cleaned up and uh, the parts repainted, we'll do another video and we'll put her all back together. Uh, don't see anything really major that we're gonna have to deal with uh, as far as repairs or anything. Uh, so hopefully this will be a pretty straightforward uh, getting it put back together. So with that, that'll be a wrap. Thanks for watching as always, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't. We'll catch you next time around.